You often comment that watching our channel is financially damaging, and today is no different. This gun is not cheap. In fact, it costs more than I paid for my first car, a 1992 Honda Accord EX. Many of you have likely never heard of a Hayes Custom. They're a, if you know, you know shop. But even with my love of 2011s, somehow I've never actually come across a Hayes gun. So while it's a, if you know, you know shop, the truth is, I don't know. To put it in perspective, Hayes only makes two full custom guns a month. This is their Cobra series. It's their semi-custom 2011 that's designed to allow more people to get their hands on a Hayes gun. So the question is, is Hayes Custom the hidden gem that I've often thought they probably were? Okay guys, before we get too far into the video, let's talk about where the gun came from. So the gun did not actually come to us from Hayes Custom. It came to us from a shop called Covert Projects. That's Covert with a K, um, based in California. It's okay, they're friendly to the cause, so we'll let them be. Um, but it came to us from them. Um, they have a handful of these that come in every month. Um, so you can check that out. I did uh, have a call with Hayes and did want to communicate with them directly. So I did that, but just know the relationship. Hey, the gun's actually not mine. The gun's probably going to go back to covert after this. And a gun, you, you know, look, here's the deal, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a pretty nice gun. And, and we're going to get into it as we go. But a proper piece of gun machinery like this really, in my eyes, requires a proper watch to pair with it. So the pairing today will be a Panerai submersible. This is the E-Steel, the green dial. It is really spectacular once the light hits it because it goes from this sort of light green to dark green fade. It's really freaking cool. Um, myself and Chris, both kind of Panerai guys at heart. It came to us from our friends over at Wolven. This is not my watch. This is just sort of a fun thing we're going to be adding into some of the videos that they're sponsoring. Um, Wolven, really cool dudes. They hit us up. They're gun dudes and uh, also big watch dealers in the DFW area. They ship nationwide. You can check them out. Everything comes with warranties. And hey, um, we're not talking about Timexes here, everyone. We're talking about some uh, pretty heavy hitter stuff. The APs, the Patex, the Rolex, the the, the Panerai's, the Omega's, the IWC's go down the list. So if you're into that kind of thing, I would check them out. They can also help you sell a piece if you do have a piece that you need to uh, sell. So look them up. Hey, if you give them a call, tell them we sent you. And um, I don't know, they'll probably say, who? We never heard of them. But anyway, we'll link Wolven down in the video description. On with the show. Okay, everyone. So when I first get in a new gun, it's really first impressions time, right? First thing I do is just take a look at the gun. All right, how does this bad boy actually look? So when I got in the Hayes Cobra series, I thought, look, it's clean, it's modern, it's aggressive, but there's really nothing overly complicated or flashy about it. It's just a good, clean design, right? But it's not trying to do more than it needs to do. All right, so we take in the look of it. Then sort of the hallmark for any of you that play with 2011s or those of you that will in the future, next thing you do is you just kind of see how the thing feels. And dear freaking Lord, um, the glassiness, if you will, of this gun is genuinely outstanding. So it's got that going for it. I'm going, okay, you know, checking a couple boxes here. Next thing we look at is fit and finish. Fit and finish is more than just slide to frame fit. There's a lot more to it than that. Sorry, I thought my optic was... Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clarify my SRO has come a tad bit loose. So if we've got any like weirdness going on on paper, it's definitely not because I missed. It is 100% the optic, okay? Clarify that in advance. Fit and finish. Um, slide to frame fit is, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, there's nothing. The gun is absolute, but <laughs> like it's so tight. It's wonderful. Um, 
And then everything. I mean, we're talking fit and finish goes to things like grip safety. I know this is not a non-functional grip safety, but if you just look at the blends of it, it's all really, really nicely done. So I'm going, all right, fit and finish is money. And then last thing is really the trigger. So the hallmark, really kind of the two things everyone talks about with 1911s, 2011s, grip angle and trigger. So the trigger, standard little bit of play that's in there. That's basically every 1911 ever. Um, and then it breaks right at about two and a half pounds. Reset is super short, two and a half pound break. So I don't say this lightly because I really love 1911s and 2011s. So I'm purposeful in saying this. The trigger is perfect. It is a perfect trigger. Like it's not duty, it's not race, it's in this two and a half pound sweet spot of it's crisp and the reset's wonderful. It's a perfect trigger. And the last thing I noticed when I got it is we got some pretty, we got some pretty meaty ports that are happening on the end of our bull barrel there. And I thought, okay, those ports, <laughs> I'm gonna assume they're gonna do some work. So with that said, shoot a couple rounds here. I'll run a mag just for accuracy. So I'll create, and I'm at seven yards here on paper. So I'm just gonna create my first round and then try to follow that impact. Okay, so that's round one. Let's just see if we can sort of chase that. Okay, so the trigger obviously is gonna aid you greatly in being accurate. If you wanna push some distance on this gun, you could certainly do it very easily. I was not even shooting at a pace for true accuracy there. I was just shooting to just kinda, I don't know, just, just punch some A zones. But I'll also clarify my hands are on the uh, colder side of life right now. But then in terms of the gun just running fast, the ports are doing work. So like, it is it is a gun that, hey look, if you're a competent shooter, you're gonna be able to work the hell out of this gun. The ports are doing real work. That trigger deep grip with that CZ style 2011 grip, it is a phenomenal shooter, but that's just my opinion. So let's see what the big man thinks of it. Okay, Chris is gonna run his first round on the Hayes Custom Cobra series. So let me get you queued up with the gun. Chris has not shot this, he's only handled it dry. Dude, that gun shoots flat. Yeah. Like, really, really flat. Yeah. I wasn't really getting on the gas too much, but I'm a, like a little more time on that, a couple more mags, like, that gun's fast. Very fast. Very, gun. very fast. I didn't see the dot leave the window at all, like not once. Yeah, big window, so it's a little bit of a cheat code on the SRO, but. The misses I, I had were down into the left, which makes me think the ports, I was overcompensating for those a little bit. I mean, sometimes we just miss, you know? No, 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 like I, yes, we all miss. I'm not saying I'm that good of a shooter, but I was actively trying to fight that a little bit, but this these comps do so much work that I think I was overdriving the gun, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Dude, that gun's sweet, man, aesthetically. Great looking gun. Yeah. Cool. So that's quite a bit of initial praise for the Hayes Custom, which means we should probably back up at this point and talk about who the hell is Hayes?
Okay, so let's talk about who Hayes Custom is. Because prior prior to this, and you know me, big 2011 guy, yeah. but like for you, like kind of a 2011 guy, but also like kind of on the outskirts of that world. Like, like, did you know Hayes Custom? Not at all. Okay, cool. Which is part of the point of this video. I think it's kind of a sleeper that, that people aren't really thinking about. So um, Hayes Custom is run by two brothers, uh, Ben and Aaron Hayes. Okay. Um, I talked to Aaron heading into this and uh, really nice dude. So these are not just two guys that decided one day, let's start making 2011s. And Unfortunately, that can happen sometimes where you're just like, eh, bro, you're kind of dipping your toe into the deep end here. Yeah. And, you know, you should Biting probably know some stuff. Yeah. So these are not those guys. They come from essentially some, I would call it like gunsmithing lineage. Um, so their grandfather was Jim Clark Sr. of Clark Custom Guns. And we're not going to go down that path today other than to say that's some real heritage. And, you know, there's patents. There's all kinds of stuff involved there where you're like, okay, well, you guys came from a family that 100% knows what they're doing in the world of, you know, 1911s. Okay. So as mentioned at the start of the video, they only make the word custom gets completely butchered these days and it drives me insane because people like to say everything's like a custom gun it's like it's not um Hayes custom makes custom guns they only make two of them a month. a month two actual custom guns now what's fascinating about those is not only is the whole gun hand fit but all of the machine work for those is done on manual machines oh really okay so it's not a cnc that you type in and then it no. does its thing they're no. manually machining each individual component yeah. Yeah. themselves with the machine yeah so basically they'll get an oversized frame slides components and they they like again on manual machines are doing whatever the serrations are and fitting everything and all that kind of stuff that's a really like uncommon thing well, like they have to be very detail oriented to cinch everything down, extremely, do it properly. Yeah, extremely. Um, so it's time, skill intensive. Um, they're both also shooters. They're three gun competitors. The reason I bring this up is is this. Um, I like the people building race oriented guns to know how to shoot. And there was a little moment I had with them. I was talking to Aaron, and uh, we were talking about whatever it is that we were talking about. And I said, I, I said I'm a lefty, and he goes, Oh, that safety is going to be a nightmare for you then. And I was like. I'm so glad you said this because the reason I was bringing up the lefty thing was to say, hey, this safety is really, really tough for me. Okay. And to clarify what I mean by that, everyone, it's not a, it's not actually a safety problem to, to be clear with you guys. So basically it's set up this again, came to us from covert projects. This was not made for me. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is set up for a right-handed shooter where they got a big fat paddle here. Well, the problem is, as a lefty, um, is that it's so meaty on that side that like, I can literally just engage the safety just by, by gripping the shit out of the, uh, the gun, you know? And so Aaron being a shooter was like, he, he knew that instantly. He was like, oh, that safety is going to suck for you. And he was like, how much time do you have before the review? He's like, you send it back. We're like, we'll get another one fit for you. I'm like, it's all good, dude. I can make it work for the video. But um, that told me, okay, you guys know what you're doing here. And I like that. Now, as mentioned, um, this is not a full custom gun from Hayes. This is part of the Cobra series. And that's what we're going to get into next. Guys, we'll be back with the Cool Guy 2011 in just a moment. In the meantime, if you're looking for any ways to support the channel, that'd be awesome. The 1911 Syndicate is, uh, you can just go to the website, guys, 1911syndicate.com. You can kind of learn about what we do, but um, we're actually a real estate company for anyone who might be a new viewer to the channel. Um, we basically help you guys buy, sell houses all over the country. I'm based here in Utah. That is where we film most of the time, for those of you that ask, um, but we can help you anywhere in the country. We've also got our Patreon. You can scope that out. That's linked below. A lot of cool stuff. We've got some merch uh on the site um all those things help uh youtube is not always friendly to our little gun tuber community here so hey any way you'd like to get involved we do appreciate it as mentioned the cobra series is meant to be the semi custom option from Hayes. so no you're not picking your serrations and all that kind of stuff but there is a baseline level of customation that you can make on the cobras um, that's if you're ordering it direct otherwise um you can maybe find one to, like you know in, in a shorter term fashion from uh covert projects but these have a five inch bull barrel people often ask do you you know do you bull barrel or bushing i don't really care that much i like the simplicity of bull barrels but like it doesn't really make that much of a difference to me um it's chambered in nine mil that's probably an obvious statement but just in case it's not aggressive porting as you saw from the range earlier the gun shoots incredibly flat i mean i really can't emphasize enough 
is a very, very nice shooting gun. Let's talk about the optic system. So I am a fan of, a lot of times people wanna try to reinvent the wheel on everything, including things that don't need to be reinvented. So I quite like what Covert did on this. They said, you know what? Nighthawk makes the iOS system, the interchangeable optic system, and that's really good. So why don't we just license that and just use that on these guns? And I am perfectly fine with that because still in my opinion, <laughs> actually this gun's here for a separate reason, um, but that's the Nighthawk BDS-9 and uh, you know, that's a personal gun. So it's like, I love, and my carry gun also has iOS on it. So I love the iOS system. It's really slick. Basically it, there's a set screw that you back out ever so slightly, push a little pin through. You can take this optic plate off, throw on an iron plate and run that. They've set this up so that there's no, actually, well, it's actually a good, comparison I didn't really thought of. So my actual Nighthawk here still runs uh, iron sights forward of the optic. This doesn't. So they basically opted to delete the irons altogether, or at least the rear iron if you're running in optic. So I do like that. The grip is a Chili grip. Um, this is an aggressive grip texture, almost identical or perhaps actually identical to the Nighthawk that I also happen to have there. Um, they do have a couple options so you can get this grip in stainless or aluminum. That's really dealer's choice. The steel is gonna be a little bit more expensive just because um, because it is, um, but it also adds about seven ounces. So if you really wanna knock off even a little bit of additional recoil, you could do the steel grip mod and I bet that thing is gonna shoot lights out. This one has the e E2 contour from Chile, which is basically similar to a CZ grip uh, sort of angle, if you will. So if you notice this sort of flatter back of the Nighthawk here, you'll notice on this, we've got that big, nice little indentation or whatever we're gonna call this thing here, right? I know there's a term for it, but my brain's not working good. So you can get really deep purchase into that gun. It was typically something on 2011s I opted against, but now that I'm shooting it, I actually quite like it a bit. Um, pinned grip safety on the Cobra series. Thank you for that because I just think functional grip safeties on a 2011 that's more sport oriented gun in nature is, um, is pretty unnecessary. I'll show you one other thing that I think is really interesting and I can't make any sense of it. So one, there's a couple different mag walls you can get on these. Blue would not be my color of choice, but again, this was not my gun. This is the competition one. So <clears throat> to demo something here. So a little weird hiccup within 2011s is if the mag goes in, right? Mag goes in, no problem. If your mag happens to be canted at any different angle, typically it'll kind of jam up in your grip, right? So if I kind of game this a little bit and just cant this, right? So I'll get jammed up. I go that way. I kind of get jammed up. So it's like, you really do have to come in with a pretty clean reload. On the Haze, however, they have done some sort of grip mod and it's not in the magwell. I know what you guys are going to think. You'd be like, hey, dummy, that's what a magwell does. It's not. I asked Hayes, like, what is the deal here? So basically, no matter what angle this mag's coming in at, you can't... So I'm coming at a pretty hard... I'll, I'll face camera, right? You can't get the thing to not see. And I don't know what the hell witchcraft they're doing to it, but there's something within the grip itself, not the magwell, that basically forgives your shitty reloads. Like your reloads just sort of, you just always look like John Wick. So there's that, pretty neat. Also, as mentioned earlier in the video, the trigger on the haze is about two and a half pounds. It's absolutely magical. The ambidextrous safety is the only thing I would change. Be aware of that. If you're a lefty, you're going to want more of a lefty dominant safety. This one is for a righty so that they've got a nice big fat paddle over here. The problem for a lefty, of course, is that that fat paddle basically means that I, my knuckle itself right, can index that safety. So that's not a gun problem. That's just a gun shooter combat compatibility problem. It's not an issue with the gun at all. They do have some other options you can check out, but overall, generally speaking, the price on these is gonna run about five grand. And that begs the question, is it worth it? All right, so let's start to wrap this bad boy up, put a, put a bow on this package and, and kind of what do we think of it? So the question is, hey, is this gun worth I think it's like 5,100. 
What do you think I'm gonna say? What I think is comparing it to other 2011s that you've done, right? This has some features and maybe more race competition leaning. So I think you're gonna say that the price is probably justified with that weird black magic mod that they have on this, the ports leaning more towards a competition style 2011, see where I'm going with that. Uh -huh. I think you're gonna say it's justifiable for the price okay. for what you get. Okay. With your limited knowledge of competition stuff. Yeah. Is that fair? Um, sure. Um, don't ever insult my competition cheating ability. <laughs> like, you know, you know, we have shot one competition together. Yeah. Um, and we were like some of the worst shooters that day. Um, Not last, but, but definitely close. Yeah, <laughs> pretty low on the list. Um, I'm going to tell you something that people at home are going to get mad about. I think the gun's probably underpriced. Oh, really? I think it's I think it's probably more value than you're paying for. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and people are going to be like, hey, idiot, good way to get the price raised. Hey, at the same time, you guys want me to come here and be honest with you. And I think that thing's probably undervalued. Hey, I'm perfectly comfortable with it being five grand. I have zero issue with it at all. Um, I think it's it's actually kind of a deal. Okay. To be perfectly honest with you, you know? I mean, dad or a $7,000 pit viper, like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Like it's not a competitive race. Like it's not even a competitive uh, race. Yeah. Um, one thing I would tell you, because I think it's important that as you guys hear fairly, you know, kind of kind of big claims like that, is you got to be aware. You know, um, everything everything's a trade off. This is not a Glock. You know, like this gun takes more maintenance and TLC from the owner to keep her going. Yeah. Um, even little things. You know, guns that are sprung pretty, you know, loose like that in terms of that. Y you know, that that buttery slide to frame thing. And, yeah. you know, it's like, hey, you know, your oil cho choices, temperature uh, inputs, things like that are going to matter. Like I had one day pretty early on in the review process, we actually had a couple people from Patreon shooting that day. And, um, and the gun was a little dirty, nothing much, but it was like a cold, cloudy, snowy, shitty day. And the oil got gunky and the gun eventually w was just like, I don't think I can do it anymore, sluggish. boss. Yeah, yeah, it was just sluggish. Like, and, and so I cleaned it that day. I even messaged the the people you know involved to just say, "Hey, hopefully it was a fluke that day, but just kind of letting you know what's going on." And it was like cleaned it, threw some oil on it, and um, haven't had a single malfunction okay. uh, since then. So it's like, hey, the gun's totally reliable. I only bring that up to just say, you you got to keep your expectations realistic. It's like again, it's not a Glock, guys. Yeah. It's a, it's a supercar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They require more maintenance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you wouldn't bring a Lambo out here today. Like, no, he probably want a truck or, or like his hippie, you know, the SUV that he drives, yeah, you know, rainbow mobile. yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, that's the kind of shit you want out here. Um, uh, e even things like, Hey, the ports, a ported gun will foul up a little bit faster. You know, it's going to be discharging gases. If you, you know all about that. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing's going to be discharging gases. Some of that's going to get on the barrel. It's like, yeah, you just got to maintain your gun a little bit better, you know? So it's like, that's not a con whatsoever. That's just, Hey, be a... Understand aware the of the reality of what the thing is, man. It's a performance machine. Yeah. It's not a duty gun, you know, per se. Could it be? Yeah, probably. But it's like, that's not what it's meant to be, you Correct. know? Yeah. So uh, final ranking for me. Let's see if we're going to rank this bad boy. I got to tell you, I got to come in pretty strong on this, man. Um, I'm going to flatline. A. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not I, a plus or minus, just an A. Yeah. Solid and, 95. And that's a part of me is just going, ah, things could always be better somehow. I don't know really what you, you do to make that better. Um, I'm just saying, hey, look, that's an outstanding gun. I am very pleased with it. Very, very pleased with that. And I can say this uh, about as neutral as I possibly can, because it's like, look, this isn't my gun. It didn't come from the manufacturer. Like, I'm about as neutral as we get these days on on videos. That's yeah. an outstanding gun. 100% I'd throw my money behind one. Pull right on. Yeah. Well, and as you had mentioned, this is more race oriented. Yeah. Heaven forbid you're in a legally justified self-defense scenario. Yes. You would want something to supplement that, which is insurance or more specifically firearms legal protection. Boom. That is concealed carry and or, as I mentioned, self-defense insurance. If you use a rock or a, a fin or a dog, something yeah. of that sort, as long as it's legally justified, they will cover you. Yeah. They have several different packages. Our yeah. code 1911 will save you about a third off each package. And each package includes, or two of the packages that we mentioned the most, single guy yeah. with no loved ones yeah. whatsoever in any way, shape or form. Right. 
married guy with loved ones who travels quite a bit, they have packages that fit both lifestyles. Yeah, lonely packages and then happy packages. Happy, yeah. 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 You're admitting on camera you're lonely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't drink because of my loneliness. That's not what I'm saying, everyone. It's not what I'm saying. You don't need to shed a tear for me. Some of the other benefits, if you were in a, in a scenario and there's a little mess to clean up, they'll send out someone to clean that. Um, if you get in a scenario and you have to call someone, the hotline that you call is immediate with an attorney. Money. Not a customer service rep, an attorney, which is who you want in those scenarios. Yeah. So they've been with us for a while. Thank you guys for your support. And that's it. All right, guys. See you next week. Bye.